Hello. Okay. Welcome to session six of the culminating project for year nine. All right. Good morning, respected teachers, mentors, guests, Hello. and proud parents. And beloved students, welcome to the students' individual presentations for Year 9 Culminating Project. Thank you for coming today. Um, first and foremost, let me introduce myself. I am Miss Putti and I will be your moderator for this session. So after going through the journey of middle school for the past three years, all the Year 9 students will go through a culminating project. This project is also a medium for students to demonstrate their Chikal competencies that have developed throughout the years. They investigated the needs in the community and then proposed an action plan in order to solve the issue. Today, they will present their journey from the past nine months in doing this project. Okay, so today we have um, Dylan Najib. Let me call the presenters today. We have Dylan Najib. And we have Niara Fleury. We have Oriana Dita. And we also have Paris Elshal. And last but not least, we have Batara Bumi. Can you all turn your camera real quick? all the presenters so everyone can say hi to you hello hi Arin, Faris, Flurry, Dylan and Bumi. All right thank you guys so you can turn off your camera <laughs> thank you so this year's theme for the project is transforming passion into impactful action so the theme is, um, it's aiming to achieve the targeted competencies and dimensions. We see this culminating project as one of the ways to elevate the students' creativity by solving issues that they present in their culminating project. So without further ado, now please give a warm welcome to our first presenter, Dylan Najib. Uh, good morning, most honored parents, teachers, and fellow students. I'm Dylan Najib, and I'll be your first presenter for this CP talk session. And uh, before I start the presentation, let me show you a little short peek at my CP product. It is my first work at the game making field, and I call it Warnos. Wait, uh, sorry, I, I cannot find the window in the screen share, uh, screen share window. Uh, give, give me a second. Thank you. 
So uh, warn us, a false illusion of SK. You might already be wondering, why is it called warn us when the video earlier showed the last of red color? Well, that I'm about to explain. You see, the main topic I want to tackle in my CP is drug abuse and addiction in general. And what we just saw in the short teaser video earlier is the main character of the game, Car Carla, struggling with it. At the start of the game, we see Carla's mindless void of thoughts. Everything around seems very empty. And in an effort to make this void a little less dull, Carla resorts to her daily dose of drug substance contained in that small syringe. And once she takes it, not long after, she travels into a more colorful world. You know, a less boring world. The music is peaceful, the colors speak of serenity, and her mind is right at peace, away from the distractions of the outer world. She's at peace. She's happy. Or at least that's what she wants herself to think. Because in the end, after the effect of the drug reaches its time limit, these bright colors, the music, everything immediately shatters apart. They were just a false illusion of happiness, a false illusion of color, a false illusion of escape. And as soon as they end, Carla's void is still as empty. Carla's experience is unfortunately not only limited to her own life. It is what many addicts go through their life every day. Even if there are already lots of PSAs going around for a long time, even if everyone knows well of the danger of addictions, the numbers of addiction by cases by statistics is still rising up since the start of the pandemic. Because well, when you think about it, it all kind of lines up, doesn't it? Prior to the pandemic, not many people were used to having the majority of their lives taken in an online landscape. And the transition wasn't really the smoothest for most of us either. Suddenly, many people felt as if their lives became very dull and stressful. And this gives out more risk to falling into misguiding communities or any thought of desire to recolor the suddenly desaturating colors of their life with a brighter one, a more colorful one. In this increased desperation to cover up and fill the void of their lives, many have unfortunately found themselves resorting to these bad habits. And when they decide or at least think that it's what's best for them, it will distract them from the reality. When they get hooked on it, that is when, is the, that is when the addiction starts. My goal is to raise even more awareness to this problem. People need to be reminded more of the dangers of these substances and to look for a healthier alternative to release stresses of their life. We already know that it's to fulfill their desires and empty life and all that. But exactly what does it mean by that? For my CP research, that is mostly what I was trying to figure out. What is the factor? And why do addicts prefer to stay dependent on their addiction? If, the, if they are aware of its dangers. With those questions in mind, it's pretty clear now that the main subject of focus I want to implement in my CP is PSC. And I actually interviewed the PSC teacher of Chikal Serpong herself, Ms. Mita. From our interview, I gained a lot of insight on the topic from the point of view of, of psychologists. She explained how the addicts are sometimes not even aware that they're addicted, and how it, the addiction changes them as a person to keep them tamed and leashed tight. The information given by Nisita gave me a lot more insight into the world of addicts, but I also want to look from the direct point of view of the addicts themselves. Though as much as I would like the opportunity to directly talk to them myself, I can't really risk myself going to, into their communities, you know, I'm still young and gullible and all that. So instead, I decided to look up celebrities who've had a history with addiction. And I'll be telling you about three of the most interesting ones I found. Uh, do note that all these three individuals have already been rehabilitated. They have closed that dark chapter of their life and are currently in a much better place. Let's start off with someone that you may know about. I'm pretty sure most of you still remember the infamous case of Indonesian comedian Nunu. It was talked about almost everywhere back then. And when you, uh, if you want to get a little short recap yourself, you can open up a new tab and just look up the source I wrote there. It's an interview by Compass TV and uh, it's a YouTube video, so it shouldn't be hard to find. But basically what happened is she said that the last couple of months at the time of the case going viral, 
the pressure of her work life begins to be overbearing, especially for her age. And to relieve all this tension, all this stress from her work, she resorted to these substances. Although the case directly going to the public eye might be a little embarrassing, she is still grateful that she has been caught and made to realize that she shouldn't resort to a harmful things, even if her life is not at the best position. Next up, we have Bai Mong. Not many people know about this, but Bai Mong actually had a short period of drug abuse in his past. He talked about it in an interview given by the TikTok. And although he didn't reveal much as it is his own personal life, he stated that his main reason for doing so is out of curiosity. And last of all, that might be the most surprising of all, many people know about him internationally, but not all know about his drug abuse history. He talked that about it in a video he made not too long ago, nearing the end of 21, 2021. This certain worldwide popular figure I'm talking about is PewDiePie. He talked about it in a video that has since been taken down for whatever reason, but fans had re-uploaded it, so you can still watch it, albeit not from his official channel. PewDiePie, at the prime of his YouTube career around 2017 to 2019, had gotten himself into a lot of controversies. And with lots of controversies come lots of stress and pressure. This had eventually led to his on and off addiction with drinking and, and nicotine patches. PewDiePie explained that the reason he shifted in and out with these substances is because when you're quitting these things, he described it genuinely feeling like losing a friend, you know, losing something you're relying on. But you really have to deal with that feeling, especially when you're just so fed up with it. And PewDiePie really was. He also explained about the dilemma of delaying your rehab over and over again. Kind of like, oh yeah, I guess I need to stop. But maybe just one last more jug of drink today to close the chapter. And then the addict will repeat that kind of mindset over and over until eventually they just forgot about their rehab plan altogether. It's the same as procrastinating tasks. The obvious difference being that quizzing addiction is just not that simple. Now, with a little more insight into the mind of a drug addict, I figured it would be time for me to move on to making the product. This is the toughest step yet. Even though I had a background of coding some years ago, game making is still rather a new unexplored field for me. And even though I had that in mind, I felt like I set up my bars too high in the process of making the product. Like, I to make a game with a 15 hour playtime in the span of nine months given to make the CP product. Uh, even a professional game making company would have only finished the scripts and sketches and concepts with that amount of time. Because the, the thing is with coding, especially game making, you really have to start from the ground up. You start by yourself fresh and new without the help of templates or presets. Sure, you can ask for help from people online, but I'll be honest, most of the time you don't even understand the code string they give to help you out. So you still have to make your own version nonetheless. In the end, you're only provided with the game making software and the coding language. And for my product, I use Game Maker Studio 2. And from then on, you really have to do it all by yourself. The characters you do, redrew frame by frame, same thing goes for the decorations and even the background. And don't get, even get me started at the coding part. Making every string line up was one kind of a nightmare. Trust me. Like, you, you get the idea. My expectations were very unrealistic, especially with my beginner skill set. But luckily, before it's too late, I realized the amount of time given just isn't enough to match up my expectations. And I'll be honest, I've, I'm a very stubborn person myself, so... Had I not realized that fact sooner, I would have just continued aiming for the original 15-hour plan and in the end, just make an unfinished game. Here you can see the screenshots of the progress and all. I didn't really take much because I actually forgot I would need screenshots to show my progress. I was just a little too invested in making the product. But in the end, even though the game isn't as long as I want it to be, I personally think what I've finished is enough. Sure, I obviously could have improved things here and there. Maybe had I not focused most of my attention to the original 15-hour plan, I would have made the duration longer, but still in a realistic way. Nevertheless, the culminating project has still refined me mentally as a person. The five stars competencies I've grown and developed the most 
is coming after after everyone is done and during the Q&A session. Okay, enough talking from my side. Let's uh, call on our second presenter. Uh, I want to call on Flurry. Hello. Take it away. The floor is yours. Okay. <clears throat> International poverty was my first option for my CP topic issue. And so my mom suggested that I should take village poverty in Indonesia instead. Even though it's a more complex issue, I agree to take it, knowing I don't know any information about village poverty in Indonesia. I'm Nara Flori Azahra, you can call me Flor for short, and this is my culminating project, Village Poverty in Indonesia. As you all may know, poverty in general means it is a state or condition of a person or family that doesn't have enough money to get basic needs such as food, clothing, and a proper place to live. There are five types of poverty in the village. First, independent village. Second, developed village. Third, developing village. Four, underdeveloped village. And fifth, extremely underdeveloped village. So is village poverty worse than city poverty? There are approximately 14.93 million of people living in the village that suffers from poverty in September 2019. And there are 9.68 million of people in the city that suffers from poverty at the same time. Even though it's not better, we can see from the numbers that village poverty is worse than city poverty. Why village poverty? After careful consideration with myself, I decided to be a good way to push myself out of my comfort zone. Because as I mentioned before, I didn't know much about village poverty in Indonesia. Choosing a topic I am not particularly familiar with would surely test my style of thinking because I would need to properly learn the content in order to re-explain it on my product. Another reason I choose village poverty is that people tend to focus on general poverty or city poverty, which implies that village poverty receives less attention, which is relevant to one of my project goals, that is to raise awareness. In my opinion, raising awareness about village poverty in Indonesia is important, since as I said before, not a lot of people usually pay attention to village poverty. Village poverty is also one of the major problems in Indonesia poverty factors. That is why raising awareness about village poverty in Indonesia is important. Another goal I have is to be able to help the people, as in the village, as in the people in the village that suffer from poverty. Some of you may wonder how am I actually helping them since I don't open any donations. But by creating a public magazine with precise and detailed information that could be accessed by anyone, I'm helping them by raising awareness, which comes back to the first goal. Last but not least, my objective is to create a helpful magazine that will assist people to, people to obtain more knowledge on village poverty and will aid individuals who wish to learn more about village poverty in Indonesia. Two call competencies that I choose is open-minded and innovative. I've been emphasizing on open-minded as one of the competencies throughout my CP process. Since working on this project means that I'm exposed to a wide range of different ideas, opinions, facts, and arguments. I also choose innovative because throughout CP, I need to experiment with new methods of writing, new things to explore and improve every chance I get. Investigation research. I did an interview or sharing session through Zoom with my mom's friend named Muhammad Fazri, whom I call Kafazri. He works as a researcher about villages and one of the research topics is about village poverty. I discuss a lot of stuff regarding village poverty and what I should include in my magazine. He also gave me a resources, whether it's from his own research paper or a YouTube video. Another investigation I did was attending a guest speaker session with Andri, a teacher from Skola Chikal Sepong. He specialized in the research, especially about human rights. He explained the meaning of poverty, why it happened, and the reason behind why it's still happening. The last thing I did was conduct my own research by searching for specific questions on the internet 
I'm taking the most accurate source I can find. I began my planning in September 2021 by identifying an issue and topic of interest to me. It took some time because I was unsure about the issue I wanted to pursue. It then moved on to October and November when I began researching my selected topic, which unexpectedly went extremely well. I began writing the draft for my magazine in December, but only when for a short time because of the New Year's holiday. I then continue it in January and finish it in February, all while looking for inspiration for my magazine design. On March 4th, I debuted my product by promoting it on my social media, and in April, I began preparing for a CP talk and exhibition. I did all of it while stalking and discussing it with my mentor. And if it wasn't evident enough, I made a magazine for my final product. I created a magazine full of information on poverty, ranging from a broad explanation to a more particular topic about poverty in an Indonesian village, so that people may gain an understanding of what is going on and raise awareness about the issue of poverty in the area. If you want to see my magazine, you can scan the QR code on the left or with the link on the right. I also promoted my product by openly sharing my magazine with individuals on my social media and in my immediate surroundings, such as my family and close friends. The three most difficult challenges that I faced during my journey were procrastination, time management, and motivation. I kept postponing starting my work after the New Year's holiday since I was too busy doing my school assignments and also my lack of motivation on doing it. But eventually, I managed to get the draft done in the middle of February. The last challenge I faced was during researching about my topic. There, I started to doubt myself whether if I could deliver the topic thoroughly or not, and if it was good enough. What would I do differently? I feel like there would be a few things that I would change in my product, especially the cover, that I'm not so satisfied with it. If I got the chance to redo this product, I would still definitely choose this topic again. I probably would like to include more information in my magazine and push myself more in the, mic, in the making magazine. So we have reached the end of the presentation, but before I end it, I would like to give a special thanks to my mentor, Ms. Mita, my mom, my close friends, and the people that have helped me throughout the CP journey. That is all from me today, and thank you. Thank you, Fleur. Thank you very much for your presentation. It is a very, very detailed presentation and very interesting topic as well. So let's give her a round of applause, um, words of encouragement uh, in the chat room, okay, for Fleur as a support for her. Okay, now on to the third presenter, I would like to call Oriana Dita or Orin. Hello, Orin. Okay, mm -hmm. hi. Take it away, the floor is yours. Um, you, enjoy man. the presentation. Good luck. Um, greetings. Good morning to the audience, parents, teachers, and also friends. My name is Oriana Dita Shawali, and you can call me Oren. So um, welcome to the collimating project of mine called Sato in the City. So you might be wondering what does Sato in the City mean. So Sato means Satwa or animals, and it is taken from the Sundanese language. And in the city means there's like a wildlife um, living in the middle of the city. So the issues that I think for this project is the impact of COVID-19 pandemics on these animals and also the decreasing economy challenges at the zoo. Because the struggles of the zoo's economy challenges that are decreasing um, were caused by the ticket sales that went down, which is really affected to the animals of needs during this pandemic. And also news and articles about animals that became ill and died due to lack of food and also the decreasing facilities during this um, pandemics at the zoo, not only in Indonesian zoo, but also zoo around the world. So my goal for this project is, of course, to raise awareness and also to persuade people to be aware uh, of this kind of issue more and uh, create a product that is representing about the issue and also sell them and donate the profits from the selling to one of the zoo in Bandung.
So the reason why I choose this topic as my um as my project is because the first time I heard about the first time I heard issues about the animals who are struggling at the zoo is back then in 2020 when the COVID-19 pandemic has just begun for a few months. And I at first I had no idea that this pandemic will also affect the zoos and also the animals there. So by this, the reason why I choose this um topic to be in my project, I wanted to like persuade people to raise awareness and also I wanted to share this issue to everyone, um, to kids, to adults and also especially to young youth and teenagers to tell them how important this um, issue is. Next is the South End City journey, which is the process of making this um, project. So first I did a research about the zoo situations and also uh, animals conditions in this pandemic. And I noticed that there isn't uh, really much information about this issue and it made me feel concerned and I really wanted to do something to help this issue. Next is I did a little survey about um, how many people um, got to do during this pandemic and um, and the answer is mostly zero, which, which means is they have really gone to the zoo during this pandemic and it really affected to the PCAT cells, as I said before. So next is I interviewed an expert from Bandung Zoological Garden. Um, he is Pak Suha Shafi, or I call it as Pak An. He is the marketing communications from Bandung Zoological Garden. So I interviewed him by asking questions about the um, zoo's conditions and also animals' conditions during this pandemic. And he said that... Um, in the beginning of the pandemic, the zoo was closed for about three months and there's no income from the ticket sales, which really affected to the animals' needs like the lack of uh, the food and also the facilities during this pandemic. So by this, the zoo tried to like motivate something by reducing a few percent of animals' food from before and also some of the animals there only eat for about two days and one day fasting. So this modification will also have a strategy fund for the food that will cost cheaper. The first action that I do is um, I went to Badung Zoo to take some pictures of the animals there, and um, there are like five different uh, five different animals here. There is Dory the iguana, who had the reticulate python, Putri the sulfur the cockatoo. And also Tamiya, the female giraffe, and the last one is Adeoa, the Bintorong. So I created a stickers of them and put some fun facts about their species and also about them. So I think by creating the stickers, it can make um, the people feel more interested about my project and also my product. The second action that I do is I sell Thai tea and also coffee goods for... Um, for this project. And so by purchasing this drink, the customer can help to donate um, to the zoo during this pandemic situations. And also by buying each of the drink, you will get this fun fact stickers as I say before. I actually have it here. Um, and lastly, I also make an Instagram for this project to promote my products and to sell my product is actually um, run really well thanks to the customers and also thanks to the people who had supported my project. So the final product for my project is a donations. And um, finally, after two months of taking actions by selling the product, which is Thai tea and coffee, I, I have finally collected around 1,500,000 rupiah to donate um, to the Venus Zoolito Garden on 24th of March, 2022, uh, last month. And it, and it went really well. I don't, I I met Pa An and um don't, and gave the donation money to him. And um in the left here, as you can see, there's a Banyu Zoological website. Um, they write a donate. They write articles about my donations and also project about Sato in the city. So if you wanted to check them out more, you can scan the QR code down there. So for article competences that I develop, I. I choose caring and also action orientation because um, the main goal for this project is to raise awareness and also to donate for donate for the final product. 
And um, the or action orientation is that the process of making the plans and also give information about the issue to let people get a clear and better understanding about this issue. And also I take action by promoting and also creating products and persuade people to be able to be, to be aware of this kind of issue more. So there are actually many challenges of the process of making the CP, but um, I'm choose to this um, time management and also dealing with pressure because the process of making this project needed like a time managing, but I actually have like a plan to manage the time well under this project, but sometimes I'm not in the mood of doing it and I keep procrastinating stuff. So I get pretty hectic at the end too. And next one is dealing with pressure because um, working on CP need a uh, focus and clear mind to be able to get an idea and also to be able to work on the CP smoothly. Well, but sometimes the pressures of um, searching, creating, releasing, promoting, and also finishing the CP product is pretty difficult for me because I have to like deal with things outside of CP, which is like schoolwork, summative, formative, and also classes, and also um, outside of school. And that's why I, I kind of get pretty stressed a little bit, but overall I can guess bad into it, pass into it, so it's all good. The reflection, what will I do better? Of course, as I, has, as I say before, in the challenges about time managing, I think I could develop more, I, uh, I think I could develop more in time management if I, if I could not just like procrastinate stuff. And I think I could have done this project earlier if I, uh, about, um, in this project earlier and also not be hectic at the end if I'm not procrastinating things. So um, what did you get and how do you feel about completing this project? First of all, I get many experiences um, during the process of making this project. And also um, I'm getting out of my comfort zone to like, promote my products, to like talk and interact with people, to discuss about my product, which is very, um, very far from my comfort zone. And um, lastly, I feel very proud of myself for finishing this um, coding thing project for about six months. And yes. So um, here's the QR code. If you wanted to know more about my CP, you can, um, you can scan the QR code here. Lastly, before it ends, I want to say special thanks to um, the teacher, um, Payoga as my expert, Miss Dira as my homeroom teacher, and also my friends and my family, especially my mom and my dad, who helped me with creating the products and also promoting the products. And I wanted to say special thanks to um, Tante Diana, who helped me connect with Badung Zoo Chico Garden, and also to um, Tante Sri as the owner of Badung Zoo, who already gave me permission to do this project together with Bandung Zoological Garden. And lastly, to um, my expert, uh, and for giving me support and also information about this zoo. So um, that's it for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Hope you guys get a good things from this presentation. Thank you. Wow, such a very, very interesting um, project, Arin. Thank you for sharing your journey. Um, I'm sure for those of you watching have a lot of questions that you want to ask Arin uh, and also Dylan and also Fleur. Please write down your questions in the chat box and I will read it to them later on during the Q&A session. Um, thank you, Arin, for presenting your project. Now, on to the next presenter. I would like to call Faris Elsha. Come on up, Faris. Good luck on your presentation. You may start. So, Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Faris Elsal from year 9B, Chika Sapo. And today I want to present my commenting project to everyone. So, my project name is Sehat Kui. To begin with, I'd like to tell you that my project is based on two issues that are overweight and an unhealthy lifestyle. But why did I choose this topic? I choose this topic because an unhealthy lifestyle could lead us to be overweight. And being overweight could lead us to many diseases such as obesity, high blood pressure, and many more. These issues are also the things I can relate to 
since I like sports and exercising. Therefore, my goal is to bring awareness so that people can be healthy both physically and mentally. I also would like to inspire and help people to reach a healthy or ideal weight by providing complete information about health, including weight, including losing weight, meal plans, and workout plans. With that goals, I believe that I had accomplished three critical competencies that are committed, healthy, and intelligent. As for the committed competency, this project related to sport or exercise, there has been my routine as well. And absolutely need consistency because if you don't have the commitment to do something, then you can achieve what you want. Next, by applying a healthy diet, workout, and finding more information about it, I do believe this has helped me to attain health competency. Third, it needs intelligent competency when researching the information needed, such as how many calories you need, protein intake, how much carbohydrates you should eat, and what effective exercise is, and many more. Next up is my CP template. Throughout the process, I did mentoring with my mentor and started the process by identifying the topic that I wanted to pick. After that, I did the research on the topic, and then after I did the research, I conducted an interview and expert. After researching and interviewing, I started to plan the website and finally launch or uh, publish it. So this is the process of doing research. Firstly, I interviewed an expert who is Pak Agus as a PhD teacher from Cikal Sentuk and also an athlete trainer. I interviewed him mostly about exercise and healthy diet. What should and what shouldn't people consume to reach the healthy or ideal way? Other than interviewing, I also compiled other needed information from some other references. As I watch Greg Dusset or Floyd More Deeds and Chris Harry. Their content provides all the information that support the other findings, such as when our weight is stuck and everything about exercises. So this is the product that I made. I made the website with an opening to talk about what a healthy lifestyle is. And after that, there is an obesity fact on the top of the website. The obesity fact is needed to for obesity become one of the diseases caused by being overweight and people need to know more about how to prevent it. Next to the other person website, it covers a healthy diet like what you, what, you, what you should eat or drink and what you should avoid. The diet that you can try and my personal experience of eating a healthy diet and routine exercise is also on the website. And I also provided some full body exercise videos that you can do at home. These videos are modified compilation exercise from my personal trainer and from the sources that I got during the research process. So that's it about the throughout process of experience in making the CP project. And I quite enjoyed it since it's related to my passion. However, I face some challenges. First thing first is about the writing techniques. Since I choose to make a website, I needed to be more aware of the grammar, word choice, and typos, including the also how to make a good flow in my writing, bridging sentence, and organizing ideas. Other than writing itself, another challenge is the time management. Why is that? For the time management, I sometimes struggle to continue my CP project 
because I sleep so much that it prevents me to continue for completing the CP project. And for the reflection, here are the two things I would do differently. Make more various content. I could write more things. For example, about the downside of being overweight. And many more. Two, manage the website more interesting and reach more readers. I could put, put more picture and write some low calorie food that you can try. And lastly, I want to give a special thanks for my mentor, Miss Gia, for helping me throughout this CP project. And my family for giving me support. And that's all for me. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Farias. Uh, I'm really glad to hear that you enjoyed this whole process, uh, especially since your project is based on your passion. And that's very, very good to know. So thank you for that, uh, for the audiences or for the one watching, for those of you watching, please give um, Faris a virtual round of applause uh, for his culminating project. And don't forget to ask your questions, write down your questions, anything that you want. And I will ask all the presenters later on during the Q&A session. Now, we have the fifth presenter today, is Batara Bumi. Okay. Bumi dan ini adalah komite yang terbaik yang berada di bumi. topik topik adalah agar masuk ke sejarah masih bisa diingat. Lebih sekali datangnya kita tidak sempat cerita. Mati syurga, tujuan macam itu. Menjadikan datang di atas tersebut untuk memotivasi jalan lebih muda menjadi orang atau peneliti. Video-video ini terbius, aku tidak melakukan video yang telah diberi sama sekali kamu. Menurut saya, interview tidak bisa untuk topik ini dan survei tidak terlalu penting. Simple banget. 
Do you like working on your PP? Hmm, nggak sih, sih. Walaupun aku bisa cari topik yang, walaupun aku bisa mencari topik yang lebih realistik daripada ini, aku tetap senang dengan finish produk dan aku pilih topik yang terus sekarang. Mereka waktu itu langsung. Walaupun aku udah jawab sebelumnya, menurutnya sih anxious karena aku nakia pendiam. Jadi, ya, aku usah yang bisa aku. Uh, how was the whole experience? Hmm. Lumayan sih. Perlu, perlu diperbaiki di komunikasiku dan chipnya sendiri. Tapi untuk usaha pertama sih, not bad. Lumayan. Your product came to be. Ini pertamanya aku. Ini yang bikin poster buat. Jadi kasih punya kapital yang perlu di olah. Tapi menurutku itu enggak terlalu efektif. Jadi di jadi di yang di sama yang produk sekarang. Kita masih melipati project to be finish ini sekitar. tiga minggu sih, eh bulan karena itu aku harus ngerti cara makai website-nya ya, sekejian atau yang lain spesifik dan sejak kecil aku selalu reptil dan aktif mengarah-anak itu, jadi kalau kayaknya aku mau jadi paleontologi sih terus kalau aku juga memperkenalkan our own project Hmm. Ya, mungkin aku akan mengontrol aku jadi lebih rapi dan less chaotic. Gue gue mengambil feedback dari orang-orang jadi aku mungkin beneran harus mengirim survei agar dapat feedback dari teman-teman yang pas yang jam itu. Jika perlu latihan kalau memakai website yang belum aku pernah pakai sebelumnya. Ini biar udah tahu ya, eh, oke, okay. terus ini, terus ini. Hmm, jadi aku mau cuci sibit produk, nah, kalau topiknya sih enggak ya. Karena kalau membahas perubahan produk jarak, biasanya di asosiatifnya di... Hmm, enggak. Ini terkait dengan museum atau exhibition gitu, jadi enggak, itu mungkin kalau topik lain ya. Di jaringan produk presentation, aku per- pernah sering melatihan Jadi, sekitar 10 Oke, okay. that's basically it Thank you for sending Yay Okay And that is the end of Bumi's presentation And with that, we have all the five presenters today done in explaining their project. Let's give all of them a round of applause, a virtual round of applause. Give them a lot of words of encouragement and emojis in the chat box. Okay, now I would like to call all the presenters um, because now we are on the question and answer session. So, Congratulations to all presenters. Now I would like for all of you to open up your camera and let's start the Q&A session. Thank you. Okay, now let me check um, the chat room. First of all, I would like to say congratulations for all of you for completing your culminating project and you have done a really, really good job in presenting your project. Um, now, I have a few questions uh, in the chat box, in the chat room. Uh, I think this is from Icha. Uh, this is for all of you. What is your biggest pressure and how did you overcome it? This is for all of you. Um, The question uh, is for all five presenters, and please take turn and feel free to answer it. Who wants to go first? What is your biggest pressure, and how did you overcome it? 
Probably Dylan wants to start first. Um, my biggest pressure, honestly, was when I realized that the the time was simply not enough for me to make the original hour plan because it just sort of instantly demotivated me, you know. Like everything just so, it suddenly falls out of plan. But I I managed to um what's the word? I I managed to overcome it mm-hmm. by instantly creating a secondary plan, a plan B. Okay. All right. I changed everything, the concept of the game, the plot, and even scrapped some of, uh, even scrapped the, the code, uh, the coding that I made for my original plan. Oh, wow. So the biggest pressure for you is time, which causes you to change your plan along the way. Right. Okay. That was a very, very important lesson. Thanks, Dylan, for sharing. Um, who wants to go next? Probably Faris, Bumi, Fleur, Orin. What's your biggest pressure and how did you overcome it? Faris, probably? Uh, for me, it's the same as Dylan, the time. Uh, whether I finish it on time or not. Okay. And just this. All right. So time is really, really a big pressure for you guys. Okay. So um, it's making you nervous whether you can finish it on time or not. Thank you, Faris. How about Bumi, Blair, or Orin? Uh, can I go next? Yes, sure. Um, I will say the same on um, time management because, um, you know, in the process of making the project, I keep like procrastinating stuff to do my project. That's why I get pretty hectic at the end of the finishing. So I okay. think the pressure is in time management. Yeah. All right. Uh, and how did you overcome it, Arden? Because you say procrastinating and then time management. How did you overcome that? Um, I just like try to like find motivations and also more to do my project and also to like research more about my project and yes, I, I kind of found it in there. Okay. Try to find motivation still. All right. How about Bumi or Fleur? Bumi, go ahead. Okay, how about we, we head over to Fleur first? A biggest pressure. Yeah. Yep. Um, probably when writing my draft, I need to finish it in the middle of February and I was running out of time. Since I was uh-huh. also catching up with other subjects, but eventually I got it done in time with my mentor helping me. Okay. So when developing the draft is the most um, challenging and that's where you feel pressure the most. Okay. Thank you, Flurry. How about you, Bumi? Sama kayak orang-orang lain sih. Cuman mm-hmm. time management sama preparation ya. Karena aku orang pendiam, jadi agak bisa ngomong ke orang banyak-banyak gitu. Okay. Jadi managing uh, ini ya. Uh, time management juga dan komunikasi juga gitu ya pressure yeah, yeah. okay thanks Bumi now I have um, I have a this is a good question I think I have a question from Kinar uh, how would you summarize your CP process in one word in one word you may think you may think about it and who wants to go first? Just go ahead. How would you summarize your CV process in one word? Uh, may I go first, Miss? Sure. Um, this might, uh, some, some of you may see this answer coming, but uh, nightmare. 
<laughs> okay, okay, Dylan Nightmare. How about the others? Arden Fleur Challenging. Challenging. Okay, thank you. Arden? Um, I will say mine as action. Action. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting word. Bumi? Satu kata? Uh, uh, pressure juga sih. Pressure. Okay, thank you, Bumi. Faris? Uh, capek. Capek? Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I'm sure, I hope, even though it's challenging, even though it's exhausting, um, pressure, uh, hopefully it's a rewarding experience also. It's a rewarding learning process for you um, because I see the variety of your topics and I am sure that the topic is very, very much related to your passion. So I hope that you had a rewarding experience as well. Okay, um, I have, well, this is a specific for Dylan, uh, but I think it's more technical because it's about coding. Um, can you explain the coding behind the game? And did you have any background in coding before attempting to create the game? Can you answer this like rather quickly, Dylan? Well, in short, my background experience from coding mainly came from an a chicle elective and I think it was year seven, but there was a chicle elective for coding and uh so the experience there helped me a little in this product in making this product. Okay. So I had a uh, so I had an experience uh, before, and it it did help you in making this this project. Yes, but not much. Miss. There's there's really a lot of new things that I've discovered. And then you discovered a whole new thing, a lot of new things. Okay, thank you, Dylan. Uh, I think, well, we still have a lot of questions from the audience. Uh, I can see Pandu asked, Budira also asked. Ibu Fitri also asked question, but I'm really, I'm afraid that we, this is all the time that we have. Um, so probably, but probably I, I'll squeeze in one more question. Um, this is from Pandu for everyone. Can, how would you apply your project um, to your daily life after this? That's a, that's a question to think about, right? Who wants to go? Because your project is about, you know, a lot of it is action-wise. Like Faris is about healthy living. Um, well, Fleur is about um, poverty, right, Fleur? Yes. How would you like, apply this project on a daily basis? Who wants to try to answer? Dylan, I'm. Uh, I see that since you developed the game, probably would you play this game? Uh, does Panda mean by that question like our our topic of CP or the product? Yes. Your it can be your topic. It can be your product as well. Well, product wise, I even though making the game really was a lot of pressure, I actually find it fun so in my free time i might i might make a new game on my own wow nice okay yeah maybe turn it as some kind of hobby or something turn it into some kind of hobby to make a game great that's very good to hear dylan anyone else wants to add in before i wrap this session up Okay, so with that, I think um, the session, let's wrap the session up. And I want to thank Dylan, Bumi, Faris, Fleur, and Orin for presenting your journey, for presenting your project. It's a really, really, really great project. And I hope this project will continue even after the CP period. 
So thank you, everyone. You may turn off your camera if you want to. Uh, I would like to remind you all that the CP Talk will continue on another session. Um, actually, it's today at 1.30 p.m. There will be an exhibition for all the year nine students today at 1.30 p.m. And everyone can live stream the CP exhibition on Sokola Chikau official YouTube. And lastly, I would like to say thank you one more time to all of the audience here today, the mentors, great job mentors, fellow students, proud parents, thank you parents, and also respected guests. Thank you for having me as your host. Good morning, and I'll see you in the exhibition. Bye.